Greetings, cinephiles. I'm Kat Liddell, and welcome to Wild Rivers Film Radio, the official podcast of the Wild Rivers Film Festival on KCIW 100.7 FM. Today, we're sitting down with actress Jacqueline Emerson to discuss her new film, Art Thief. Trained in film, theater, and improv, Jackie has performed with such theater companies as Reprise LA, Theater Works, The Playwrights Foundation, LA Opera, and the Stanford Shakespeare Company. In film, Jackie is also well-known for her portrayal of the character Foxface in the Hunger Games film franchise. But before we get started, we'd like to thank Wild River Film Festival's presenting sponsor for 2024, KDRV Newswatch 12 out of Medford, Oregon. Thank you, Newswatch 12, for making the film festival possible this year. This year's Wild Rivers Film Festival is also brought to you in part by the Tolawa Daini Nation, the Oregon Community Foundation, the Ford Family Foundation, Travel Curry Coast, the Roundhouse Foundation, and the City of Brookings. Are you interested in sponsoring the Wild Rivers Film Festival and our mission to create indie cinema on the Wild Rivers Coast? You can learn more on our website, wildriversfilmfestival.com. And if this is the first time you're hearing about the Wild Rivers Film Festival, we are so glad you're going to be joining us today. The Wild Rivers Film Festival is a celebration of indie and local cinema that happens during the third week of every August in Brookings. Over the course of four days, we screen more than four dozen films at three locations across the city. Many of our film screenings feature Q&A sessions from visiting filmmakers, and our festival includes daily educational panels, VIP parties, and a not-to-be-missed awards ceremony on the final day of the fest. Festival passes are on sale now at wildriversfilmfestival.com, and we can't wait to see you at the show. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Wild Rivers Film Radio. I'm Kat Liddell. Today, we're sitting down with Jacqueline Emerson, who stars in the new heist thriller Art Thief. Jackie recently visited Brookings for a special screening of the film at the Redwood Theater on May 27th, and the award-winning film will be playing at the festival later this summer. Jacqueline Emerson is a multi-hyphenate actor at her core. She's a consummate actor, singer, composer, writer, as well as a burgeoning director. Known for her work in the Hunger Games film franchise, Jackie is one of the stars of the new thriller Art Thief which has been picking up several awards on the film festival circuit. Jackie Emerson, welcome to Wild Rivers Film Radio. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, you're visiting us here in Brookings specifically to promote Art Thief, where you played one of the leading roles in artists named Olympia Hutchinson. And as we're taping this, Art Thief is still on the festival circuit and much of the public is still finding out about this film. Uh, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about what this film's about, just in your own words? Yeah, so um, Art Thief is a fictionalized retelling of what happened in the very famous art heist at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, where um, a Rembrandt, a Vermeer, and countless other pieces of art were stolen and never recovered. They still haven't found the perpetrators, so Arthur came up with this brilliant idea of um, a take on it that was kind of sort of mob-influenced, sort of Bonnie and Clyde. Mm -hmm. Um, And in it, I kind of get to be the Bonnie character. Oh, how exciting. Well, speaking of the Bonnie character in this in this film, um, what really drew you to your character or just to working on this project more generally speaking? Um, I think I was really drawn to the fact that it was a film about art made by artists. Arthur is a phenomenal painter. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I thought that, you know, he could have a real insight into this world in a way that very few other people really could. Mm -hmm. Um, And also Olympia as a character is very passionate. She's very driven. um, And she's an artist at her core. And I think as an artist in a different medium, I really responded to that in the role. That's really exciting. Well, um, so I told you actually got some lessons in painting to prepare for this role. Yes. Uh, Yeah. Had you had you had much in way of art classes before then? Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm a performing artist. Uh, My visual art skills are negatory. Uh, but I was very lucky because going to Provincetown and getting to be in such a community of artists, there was a phenomenal artist there who Arthur partnered me up with, and she became my teacher. And so I studied with her for maybe two weeks before I started filming. And actually together, we helped paint some of the copies in the paint in the film of the Vermeer and of the Rembrandt, which oh. was really cool to be able to be like, oh, I helped paint that, you know, except for I would do something and it would look terrible. And then she would come in and then instantly make it look phenomenal. And I still have no idea how she did it. (laughs) (laughs) But the biggest blessing I got was when the film screamed in Provincetown, she came up to me and she was like, I believed you were an artist. And that was high praise coming from her. She was very strict about like my stance. You have to stand like you're going to fight. Like, you know, real painter stance. And 
the way you do the brush strokes and all of that, and the way you hold the paintbrush, it was nothing like what I thought it was. And so um, it was very, and as somebody else came up to me after the screening, they were like, so you paint? And I was like, no, but I'm glad I tricked you. I know, right? <laughs> That's so exciting. Well, um, you know, uh, working on a film like Art Thief uh, must have felt like not just a, car- a crash course and uh, not just painting, but like art history, famous artists themselves. Um, so. Yeah. What do you what do you think was was the most eye opening thing you learned about like the art and the art gallery world while you were working on this project? Um, I would say that learning how art auctions work. Yeah. Yeah. Arthur has spent a lot of time in art auctions and it's a very specific subset of the art world, and it's one I never understood, but my character works at an auction house. So learning about the semantics of it was really interesting and about how, you know, my character is an art conservator. And so what they'll often do is have people touch up these old paintings. But it's very, I have a line in the movie where it's like, when you're touching it up, it can't be too perfect. You have to keep, you know, the dents and the bumps and all of that stuff because the imperfections are in, in a lot of ways what makes it more valuable, which I think is not only a very great, analogy for life but also um you know it's just fascinating that that's a job and that there's people who who do that and i also learned a lot about the way that you know artists work and that you would have um artists trained in the circle of a, a person so it's not a rembrandt but it comes from like it's a circle of rembrandt or whatever which means that it's like you know a couple people removed and um but people that studied under him it, it, it's just fascinating and the terminology is amazing and that's worth something because they come from the circle of rembrandt you know, I'm a real academic. And so one of my favorite things about acting is getting to immerse myself in a different world and to learn different skills and how different people talk and why they are the way they are. And um, so the more history and the more information there is for me to gobble up, uh, the happier I am. So it was really fun from that perspective. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, no, it, that's been one of the shadowiest things for me, like in terms of of the art world, like going like, how how does one evaluate a painting? How yeah. does someone assign value to to what is a very subjective piece of art sometimes? Mm-hmm. That must have been super fascinating. It really was. Yeah. And it was, it was really fun to learn about. Yeah. Well, you know, we've been watching Art Thief just steadily picking up award after award at festivals over the last year. And um, it sounds like you've been to plenty of festivals in your day. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, we're, we're curious, like, what do you what do you consider uh, to be particularly special about seeing a film at a festival, like a film festival, as opposed to, to seeing it during like a run of the mill movie night at the at the local movie theater? Um, You know, I think what's special about festivals is it really always feels like a community gathering. Um, And oftentimes it feels like a community coming together to support a group of artists and artistry. And, um, you know, I think what's fun about festival films is they can be really hit or miss, but it doesn't really matter because you're getting to come and support all these people putting themselves out there and putting their artistry out there and, um, and, and the community comes together. And I think that that's a really you know, special thing. It's almost not about the quality of the films. It's about the quality of the people coming together to support art and filmmaking in general, and also the democratization of filmmaking, Mm -hmm. which I think has been a really exciting, you know, technological development in the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. Um, And I think that that's one of the most special things about film festivals. Of course, you will hope that it'll also be eventually playing in your run of the mill theater, which I think Art Thief is actually starting to have a limited theatrical run, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. But I think the special thing about festivals is it really gets everybody out there. And that's um, special as less and less people are going to theaters to have an excuse to get people up and out. And there's something really spectacular about seeing something on a big screen. And I think a lot of movies were meant to be seen on a big screen. And I think Art Thief is one of them. And so it's been really fun to see the response that it's having. I think it would be way more impactful on a big screen than on a small one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that are turning out for this uh, this screening here in Brookings. And, wow. um, you know, I guess like as you're thinking back on the process of shooting that film and you're thinking about what these people are going to witness there, like what was what was maybe like the most fun scene for you to to film as a part of this project? The whole shoot. I was really trying to convince Arthur. I was like, you need B-roll, which is just extra footage. Mm-hmm of me and Max's relationship, mm-hmm. of just us getting together. Max and I talked about it a lot, and we both were pitching it really hardcore. And so we had a whole day slated where we were going to film it. And then Chris Lazaro, who plays kind of the villain character, Bobby the Rat, 
got COVID and then I got COVID and then Max got COVID and production got shut down for a week, which for an independent film can be quite detrimental. So then all of the rest of the shoot had to go into four days and they ended up cutting a lot of stuff, including that, because that was something we'd pushed for. It wasn't necessary. And I was just like, oh my God, we have to do this. And so I was like, I'll stay extra time. Um, I just want to make sure that this gets shot. And I was like, could we just take the DP one day and go out and film just like me and Max, like going around Provincetown and looking at art and all of this stuff that I just think will be really important. And Arthur kind of begrudgingly was like, okay, well, we wrap at 6 p.m. on this day. And if you want to, and if people are willing to, you can go and do it. And we were like, okay. So I showed up. I was like, as long as people can get me in hair and makeup, which they did. They wrapped shooting. We'd already talked to the DP and Henry, who's amazing. And then um, the focus pool, um, who was also, you know, willing to come out and help. And then one of the gaffers. So we had like a little a little crew and um, and we went out there and we just started filming. And it was absolutely so much fun. It's all natural light. Like we were just going around Provincetown. Um, being creative, like, let's bike around this, like, whatever. Anyways, towards the end of the night, we filmed until it got dark because it was already kind of sunset. And as we're going by one of the restaurants, a ton of the crew comes out of the restaurant because they'd all been in there eating. And the second that they saw what they were doing, they dropped everything they were doing and joined in on the crew. And one of them starts gappy, takes off his white shirt, and he's, like, holding it up to block the light. And everyone's shining their flashlights to get good light. And all of a sudden, it was like, and then every restaurant we passed, it was like more because it's such a small town. More crew members were filing out and everybody was just jumping in. And by the very end of the night, we had like almost a 30 person crew following us down the street as we were shooting all this B-roll. And it was so much fun. And um, and funnily enough, it is, I think, a very key part of the movie. So it ended up in the movie and the editor actually thanked me. He was like, oh my God, thank you guys for shooting this because it was so necessary to developing your guys' relationship. And so it was really fun that that kind of special moment ended up also kind of contributing to the film in such a great way. Yeah, you know, how serendipitous too that, that the crew was just there. And I know it was one of those like, it was like a clown car. Like it was like more and more people just kept <laughs> showing up and we were like, we were just like, oh my God, like we were laughing so hard. It was, it was, I, I wish I had like film footage of it. I mean, I do, but like not of everybody, but it was a really special experience. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love those comments too, because it really like speaks to the the collaborative nature. It's like, and that's so necessary to, to get a film going. And just that everybody was willing to come out after hours and shoot this thing because we all felt like it was necessary to the, to the piece. And that's, you know, the level of commitment and passion that you want to see and that is sort of a dream to see. And um, you know, on these kind of lower budget projects, people are doing it for the passion. And that's what's so special about them. Like on higher budget projects, people are, you know, sometimes doing it for the paycheck. And so it's a really special experience when you have that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, you know, we, we tell people here in uh, with our with our theater crews, like theater is a team sport. And like that just yeah. goes for the performing arts in general. Absolutely. hundred percent. And that's one of the things that I love so much about filmmaking is I come from a theater background. And I think weirdly, in even more of a way than a you know, than in the theaters, in the theater, as much as I always tried to not have this happen, there always does seem to be a slight divide between the tech and the cast. And I think that part of that is because, you know, sort of until tech week, you're kind of doing different things. Mm -hmm. And what's so amazing about a film is like, you're almost spending more time with like the DP and the focus pole and the sound guy than you are with your other castmates a lot of the time, mm -hmm. because those are the people that you're with every single day in very intimate circumstances. And it really, like, when we were filming Art Thief, every single Saturday night, we would do a big barbecue with the whole cast and crew. Mm -hmm. And it was at, you know, the the 80s house. And it was so much fun. And I think that that's, like, one of the really special things about filmmaking is you really do get kind of this sense of community that, to me, felt reminiscent of theater, but, like, times 100 in a weird way. Because it's also really concentrated where it's like, okay, we're all together for a few months. And this is it. And then we kind of go our separate ways. But for those few months, it's like we're a team and, and every single person is supporting everyone else. And that's why I really don't have any patience for actors that, you know, make crew wait around or, um, you know, treat anybody with disrespect because it's like, you know, we're all it's such a team sport. And like they're spending time in a weird way. You come on and you kind of go like, I sort of feel like the least important person here. 
Um, but also I have to deliver immediately because you've spent an hour and a half setting up the shot so that I can come in and do my job. And so if I don't come in and do my job, it's disrespecting everybody else. And mm-hmm. so it's like, it, it really is, um, it's one of the things that I love about film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So many moving parts, but so much, so much payoff in the end. Yeah, exactly. A lot of synergy. Well, you know, speaking of your of your theater background, um, so Brookings, is obviously, is it's just a few hours drive away from the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Fantastic. And we have multiple, multiple theatrical groups operating in, in just Brookings alone, let alone our surrounding area. So so folks are very passionate about the performing arts and the arts in general in this mm-hmm. in this community visual, too. Um, and just by glancing at your resume, it's very evident um, you have just as heavy of a background in theater as you do in film. And yeah, because of that, like, we, I mean, I really have to ask, like, you know, as far as your work in theater, um, I, I'm always loathe to ask somebody, like, what their favorite project to work on was. But, like, in recent history, like, what's been your, your favorite recent theatrical production to work on and why? Um, I would say this isn't so much research, recent history, but one of the most impactful things I ever did was I was in a professional production uh, with Kelly O'Hara of Sunday in the Park with George when I was a kid. And I played Louise, who's the child in the production. And it was directed by um, Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. Okay. And it was such a transformative experience. That musical to this day is my favorite musical of all time because it's just about, you know, the art of making art and George Seurat keeping in the theme of painters. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really, as a kid, to be around such professionals and to be in such an incredible environment, it made me raise my own professionalism and my own craft and I don't know, like value. Uh, it was just a really, it was such a spectacular experience. I have, I have no other words to describe it. And it, it really has become my favorite musical. And it is to this day. It's a very impactful show to me. Um, and then in terms of plays, I think we, we kind of talked about this before we started, but I got to be Beatrice in a production of Much Ado About Nothing at Stanford. And that was a blast of an experience. And I also just felt like it was really, um, I don't know, stepping into my own in many ways. Uh, But I would say probably my favorite theatrical production I've ever been a part of was right before the pandemic, I did a production in L.A. by an extremely talented playwright called Charlotte Stay Close was the name of the production. Mm -hmm. And um, it was at Ensemble Studio Theater, Mm -hmm. um, which is a really phenomenal theater troupe. And I did it in Los Angeles. And actually, that was the reason I ended up in Art Thief, because the artistic director, Keith Sarabica, knows Arthur and had worked with him from a while back. And recommended me to audition for the role um, because he'd see my work in the play. But mm-hmm. it was a very important play to me. It was the first time that I feel like I really stepped into my artistry in a new in a new way. And it was the first time that it was like I just didn't care who was in the audience because I felt so connected to what I was doing and the art that I was doing. And and I felt so grateful to be a part of it. And it was the first moment that I really felt like, oh, I'm an actress and I I have to do this because there's something I can give here that I can't give in any other medium. Mm-hmm. Um, which is always a really spectacular experience when you have it. Um, so that was probably my most recent. Yeah. Yeah. No, it sounds like you've had a ton of uh, just great experiences and some yeah. great mentors along the way as well. I definitely have. Yeah. I've been sad. I've had to turn down some plays and, and theatrical auditions mm-hmm. recently because I've got too much film stuff going on. But I, I hope to get back to my theatrical roots one day. You know, it's always <laughs> a very special thing to me. It's a, it's insane how frequently I hear that from people too. They're like, the theater. <laughs> yeah. We all got a little bit of a theater nerd in us. 100%. <laughs> well, you know, part of uh, what makes your visit particularly special for us here in Brookings is that the proceeds from uh, the May Art Thief screening are supporting a filmmaking workshop for teens I in the area. About this. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And it's really exciting. Um, our spots have filled up so fast for that. There's so much interest in, and people just wanting to learn like how that process works and get some hands-on experience and see if that's a career that would make sense for them. Um, and with that in mind... I guess I'm wondering if you have any advice for for young people who are pursuing a career in the film and entertainment industries. Um, everything and everybody is going to tell you no. But if you feel it so deeply, if you literally can't do anything else, and like people said that to me my whole life, and I was always like, well, I can do a lot of other things. I'm really smart. I could do this. I could do that. And then I realized, um, oh, my soul can't do anything else. Like, I have to do this. And it has to be that strong Mm -hmm. and it has to be a deep love of the art. Um, And that's the thing that will get you through because there's a million reasons why you shouldn't, um, but you're the reason why you should. And so as long as you can keep listening to that voice inside, no matter what, you have to have a lot of grit and a lot of resilience and you have to be in it for the art. But if you are, then nothing can stop you. And so that's, you know, kind of my biggest advice. 
So, yeah, we're looking forward to see some of these kids. I know them already personally, and they're just, they're so passionate. So, so yeah, just telling them to keep and that. never let go of that. Yes. Dave. Never let go of that. <laughs> yeah. Because you have to keep doing the thing that lights you up and makes you feel alive. Because mm-hmm. otherwise you lose who you are. Yeah. And so, you know, make, do whatever you can to make it work, but just keep going and trust that it takes years. It is not as easy as it looks. And no overnight sensation is ever an overnight sensation. You just have to keep going in the moment. I mean, I had a friend that literally was on the verge of quitting the industry um, in this past year and then just booked the biggest break of his life. Mm -hmm. And this is like after having been in the industry for 16 years. And like, it can take a long time, but it's about finding a support system and really being like, I'm going to make this work no matter what. And believing it so strongly. Because the biggest thing I realized is if I don't believe in myself, why should I expect anybody else to believe in me? Mm-hmm. And that's what this is about. It's about getting a lot of people to believe in you. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful advice. Now, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. Well, with Art Thief, uh, you know, being being wrapped and being on the festival circuit and it sounds like possibly getting picked up for, for a limited theatrical release, um, you know, there's always the next project on the horizon. And uh, do you have any projects coming down the pipeline that you'd like our listeners to know more about right now? Yeah, um, I just had a film come out called Wine Club, which is a hilarious mm-hmm. uh, cult comedy. It's actually on Tubi now for free, but you can also get it on any other platform. Okay. Um, I have a film premiering at Tribeca in two weeks called Winter, Spring, Summer, or Fall with uh, Jenna Ortega, which I'm really excited about. And then um, I'm about to be in a movie about Kent State, actually, which I think is very relevant to today. Mm-hmm. Um, I just did Chicago Med. I have a TV show for Hulu coming out next year, um, which I'm excited about. And then a couple other projects that I can't really talk about yet, sure. but mm-hmm. should be filming towards the end of this year, um, mm-hmm. one of which I'm also writing. So that's oh, that's so um, exciting. really fun and, and very exciting and gratifying that I'm going to get to write in it and act in it. So um, lots of stuff on the pipeline and um, a couple of deals. And then also if you play video games, I'm doing a lot of video game work right now. Mm-hmm. Can't talk about a lot of it, but uh, just, you know, keep your ear to the ground for my voice. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of, lot of upcoming things. And um, I'm really excited to start to get to talk about them and and to see them all kind of unfold. All right. Well, on the video game front, my uh, my husband's going to be very excited. He's a gamer himself, so oh I'm sure well, he'll be he, listening. Uh, did he play Starfield? <laughs> he hasn't played that one yet, but okay. that's on the list. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. in that. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and then a couple other things that I can't talk about. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, y- congratulations on having so much work lined up. That's that's really Thanks. exciting for you. It's really gratifying after you know working so hard for so many years and. To kind of finally start to see all of this unfold has been a really exciting process, especially on all sides of things that I'm getting to write and act and sing and compose and um, use my voice and um, all of that. That's uh, it's very it feels like it's been a long time coming. So I'm really excited about everything coming up. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, you know, just as we're getting to the home stretch of the interview here, um, you know, bearing in mind that you know, the Wild Rivers Film Festival, we're a new film festival we're just in our second year of operation and just getting our, um, getting off the ground, spreading our wings, you know. But part of our mission has always been to to get people excited about film culture in our local community. Um, and if you don't mind sharing, uh, what is it about filmmaking and just cinema in general that you're most passionate about and why is that? Such a good question. I think what I love from an acting perspective of it, uh, as compared to theater, is I love the intimacy of it. I love that, um, you know, you have to be so present because if your mind is any place else, any place other than where you are, you can see it on the screen. And so it really is, it's like taking all of that acting work and character building and all of that and you have to let it go and trust that it's in your skin and you just have to be. And that's the coolest part. Uh, what I what I love about you know film acting, and then um, from a storytelling perspective, well, what I said before of like there's something so cool about it, really feeling like a community experience. Like everybody is so important, everybody has a role to play. We're all in it together, you know, and that's a really special thing in a way that actually I, I felt a little more of a divide in theater that I never really felt in film, and 
I think finally what's so cool about film is the reach it can have, you know, as opposed to theater where it, it really, you know, the magic of theater is that it can only be seen, you know, every night is different. It's only seen for that one time with those mm -hmm. people. And what's amazing about film is that you can really have a far reach. Um, you can make things that are seen by millions of people and have a massive global impact. And I've been in projects that have reached a few people and I've been in projects that have had almost as big of a global impact as you can, you know, hope to have. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's amazing to me is no matter what, it seems to affect somebody, you know, even if it's just on a small scale, I'll inevitably get notes from people or, you know, whatever. And that's, you know, one of the most special parts is realizing, um, how much art and, you know, whatever it is you're saying can impact anybody anywhere at any time and be the thing they need to see in that moment. And so whether it's an escape or a lesson or an inspiration mm -hmm. or, um, a bit of laughter or a reflection, and I think that that's the beauty of film and that's the beauty of cinema. And I also just think that you can, I, I'm working on a project right now that I've written that is just so out there and so weird, and it's like, mm. you can't really do that in any other medium, and it's um, fun and creative in a way that I, I'm really excited to bring into the world, and I think that that's the beauty of filmmaking, is that it really can be a creative playground. That's lovely to hear. Well. Jackie, thank you uh, so much for, for visiting us here in our community, and thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. This has been such a pleasure. What a wonderful interview, and also congratulations on a fantastic film festival. I'm so excited to see how it grows, and I'm really honored to be here. Thanks, Jackie. Well, hey, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Wild Rivers Film Radio. I'm Kat Liddell. That's it for this episode of Wild Rivers Film Radio. This year, the Wild Rivers Film Festival runs August 15th through the 18th in Brookings. And if you want to learn more about the Wild Rivers Film Festival, buy festival passes, volunteer for us, or hey, even sign up to be a sponsor, you can learn more and you can get connected at wildriversfilmfestival.com. And you can also connect with the Wild Rivers Film Festival on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Wild Rivers Film Radio. We'll see you next time. <laughs>